Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Silvana Kelly, the Executive Director at the Breast Cancer Resource Center of Santa Barbara. As part of our mission to provide essential support services and educational programs, we have joined with Rooted Santa Barbara County to offer a monthly webinar series based on whole food and plant-based nutrition to help support optimal health and healthy living. Today's session is being presented by Chrissy Rock of Rooted Santa Barbara on nutritious soups. We're going to learn how to start our day and how to make some immune boosting and cancer fighting types of foods to help us um, along our journey. Chrissy Roth is a physical therapist and plant-based nutrition specialist, fitness instructor, wife, a mom of two boys, and the driving force for her family's plant-based forward eating transformation. I thank you and welcome you again. And let's welcome Chrissy. Thank you for joining us today, Chrissy. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. Um, happy to represent Rooted here today. And, uh, you know, we've tried to provide as much education to the Santa Barbara community as we can. And uh, yeah, whole food plant-based eating is something that may be intimidating to some people. I've been doing it for about 10 years now and I feel great. I feel super healthy. I feel energetic and there's no going back for me. Um, there's a lot of reasons to be plant-based. One is purely health. Most of the studies or like all of the studies that are coming out show that a, uh, as close as you could get to a whole food plant-based diet is going to set you up for avoiding things or um, helping, you know, if you have cancer to uh, either keep it at bay or heal you up after treatment. So, um, and, and it also helps. The, the good thing about whole food plant-based is it's not just, oh, it just helps cancer. It helps with diabetes, it helps with heart disease, it helps prevent strokes, it helps with um, autoimmune diseases. So it it runs the gamut in health. It, it really is uh, something else because veggies and food are medicine um, and not just veggies. I have a shirt that says veggies. I don't just eat veggies. I eat a lot of grains. I eat um, healthy fats in the way of avocados and nuts. And um, I, I, uh, I hope to show you today how food can be delicious medicine um, in that we're going to make these two soups that I'm going to make today. Um, one is a is a quinoa fennel based soup. It has some tomatoes, some kale, some white beans. I'm going to throw some mushrooms in there, all super cancer fighting foods. And then on the other side, I, I kind of like have my board divided a little. Um, the other side, I'm going to do uh, it's like a sweet potato, broccoli, um, garbanzo, and it's more like a warm spices. So I'm going to have some um, cumin, some mixed herbs, uh, some turmeric, because I love turmeric, because turmeric is so healthy and, and good for you and a big time cancer fighter with the curcumin in that, tum in that turmeric. So we're going to uh, work on that and, and uh, hopefully make some delicious soups. Uh, okay, so you, if you have questions as we go, I'd love you to ask as we go. Feel free to unmute yourself. There's not that many of us here live, and I so it would be nice to have a conversation. Otherwise, I'm just kind of talking to myself the whole time, and that's not as fun. So instead of going on the chat, just go ahead and unmute yourself and and yell out or wave or whatever. Okay, does that sound like a plan? <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay, so first I'm going to start with okay. Most of my soups, most most soups do start with a mirepoix, which is onions and celery and carrots. And so I already cut my onions up because I figured you didn't want to sit here and watch me cut the onions up. So I have them diced. They're kind of a rough dice. I mean, people get, you know, if you're a chef, I'm not a chef, I'm a home cook. I've learned to cook. I've been cooking for a long time. Um, over 10 years ago, I had all my meat-based dishes down and then it took me a little while to get all my plant-based dishes down. But it, you know, I did it enough that now I'm teaching cooking classes, which you you would have thought was a miracle when I first started cooking this way, because I would just make the same thing all the time and it was it wasn't as tasty. And I wish I had uh maybe done like what you're doing, got on a few Zooms and learned how to cook some things right from the, the jump. Um, but actually I feel like the other thing is there's so much more access to plant-based recipes and plant-based foods now than even 10 years ago. So it's kind of neat. It's it's having its moment. And I don't think its moment's going to go away anytime soon. So that's good. 
All right, so the first, I'm like, okay, what one do I start with? Um, the one that I think takes a little longer is the one with the sweet potatoes. Um, so we're gonna do that one first. Sorry, I have some birds, they're crazy, they're flying around. Um, if you hear noise that sounds like a bird, you're not crazy, it's my birds. And I can't get them to be quiet. Um, but hopefully they'll, they will. All right, so I'm gonna start with my broth saute. Um, we don't need to put oil in soup. Uh, we don't need to put oil to saute vegetables. We can use broth on a hot pan. So I'm gonna heat my pot up, my little trusty pot here. I'm gonna heat it up and then I'm gonna add just enough broth to like kind of coat the bottom. Like, so it almost looks like oil in the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna get that broth to heat up and then I'm gonna add my onions and my celery and my carrots. And I didn't cut these up because I, I thought I could talk while I cut and also show you uh, that in a soup, you can have all different cuts of vegetables too. And it does make the soups different. For this soup, for instance, my carrots are gonna be round like little medallions. So they're gonna look like this, right? They're not, I'm not, see, okay. So I'm not dicing these. I want when I eat a carrot to know I'm eating a carrot. Like, oh, there's a big chunk of a carrot. That's what I want in this soup. I've made it this way before. I like it this way. I like the variety of having different cuts of vegetables. If you always dice, they're always kind of in there the same way. And I don't know. I think it gets a little boring. I, I think with this one, I have the rough, I'm going to have rough cut sweet potatoes and I'm going to have these chunky carrots and my celery is going to be more chunky. So I think you can play around with even the cut of the vegetable and it does change the outcome of the soup or whatever dish you're making. Um, okay, so my broth is just barely at the bottom of the pan. I didn't put a lot, because if I put a lot, then what's happening? I'm boiling my vegetables. I don't want to boil my vegetables. I want to saute them as if I was sauteing them in oil and get that caramelization and get all that yummy taste to come out of them. So, and I put it in and you can hear them sizzling. I don't know if you can hear them, but I can hear them sizzling. So I know I have it right. Uh, and I am going to have to keep an eye on it because that broth is going to run out really fast. And I'm going to have to keep adding just a teeny bit at a time to keep this going. All right, so I'm going to put my carrots and my onions in. <clears throat> and a same, same thing for the celery. <clears throat> I have about, <clears throat> that was about three carrots. I'm going to use about uh, four celery stalks. The thing is, if you love celery, use a lot. If you don't love celery, don't use a lot. It, that's the beautiful thing about these soups too. I could use three, four, five. I could put as many sticks of celery as I want in here because it's not gonna really change the outcome. That's kind of the beautiful thing about soup. Maybe that's why I like making soup so much. I'm a little bit of a wing it cook in that you know I just kind of put it all in there and I add the spices and I taste them. And if I need more, add more. Uh, so that's how I like to do things. I know not everybody does. And in the beginning, I would suggest not doing that. I would suggest following recipes until you, you know how to work the spices and how much, like in cumin, how much cumin am I going to use? Is cumin the type of spice you use? A half a teaspoon, a whole teaspoon, two teaspoons? Two teaspoons. <laughs> Usually you need about that much. If you put a half a teaspoon of cumin in something, you're not really going to taste it in there. So you can go heavier with that spice where if I put, a, if I put two teaspoons of cayenne pepper, your, your head's gonna pop off, right? So you learn, you learn as you go, these herbs and spices, how they work in these dishes. So while this is broth sauteing and you can hear it sizzling just as if it was an oil, it's gonna taste the same way. We don't need the oil. Uh, so I'm gonna add uh, about two tables, two teaspoons of cumin seeds, uh, not, not seeds, uh, ground cumin. Cumin seeds are a whole different ball of wax. So those I use in, when I cook um, Indian cooking. Um, I have this 21 season salute. I think they still sell this at Trader Joe's. Otherwise, just get anything of mixed herbs. This has onion spices, black pepper, margarine, bay leaf, oregano, thyme, rosemary, garlic, orange peel. It's just a mix of spices. I, I really like this one. I put it in just about all of my soups. I'm going to put a tiny bit of cayenne. And again, like if you're going through cancer treatment, you're going through chemo and spices in your thing right now, it's, you don't need the cayenne. You can keep that out. Um, oh, this is just an alternate chipotle uh, chili. You could use chipotle chili if that's all you had. Uh, I have some parsley that I'm going to add at the end. I have, oops, I better stir this. Okay, I have a little, um, this is a light coconut milk. I have a, I'm going to add a little bit of that because whenever I use 
like, oh, I'm adding turmeric too. I didn't hold the turmeric up. Whenever I use uh, turmeric, cumin, cayenne, those types of spices, or, or some of those soups call for uh, you know something to kind of tone them down a little bit, sweeten them up a little bit. And I only add about a third of a cup or of coconut milk. It's just a little at the end and then I'll taste it and go, yeah. Yeah, you taste it without and then you taste it with. And I always try to add as little as possible. I don't use the full fat, but this still has a decent amount of fat. Um, but I look the other way because then I can add more spices and those spices are so good for you. They have so many phytochemicals in them, plant chemicals. Um, maybe I shouldn't use the word chemical, but uh, it's substances in there that you know help you heal and help you stay healthy. Okay, so I, I definitely have a little um, caramelization going on now. I'm going to add a little more broth again, just enough. I hear the sizzle. It's not it's not boiling. It's sizzling away here. Okay, so I'm going to cook these for about six minutes until. Oops, hold on. Okay, until they start getting soft. I like to kind of get my onions, celery, and um, carrots pretty soft. So I like to cook them maybe six to maybe eight minutes usually. Uh, that's I, I kind of do that with all of my soups. I'm going to be adding broccoli to this soup. I have maybe like three or four cups of chopped broccoli ready to go. I chopped it up 45 minutes ago. You always want to do that with broccoli. Um, in order to get the maximal amount of sephorophane and, and, and the other phytochemicals in broccoli to assimilate and, and for your body to use them the right way, uh, we could eat it raw. You could eat a little raw with cooked or you could, before you cook broccoli, if you cut it up uh, 45 minutes ahead of time, it releases an enzyme that allows us to digest it in a way that maximally um, takes in the, the compounds in broccoli that are so healthy for us. So you want to cut it up ahead of time. The other thing you could do is if you're eating cooked broccoli, you can cut up some raw broccoli and put that on it. Or what I often do is like as I'm cooking, I'll cut up this, where's my stem? I'll cut up some of the broccoli stems, which have a lot of nutrition and I'll eat that while I'm cooking. And then like my, then when my body's ready to maximally absorb and use the compounds in the broccoli in the cooked broccoli when I'm ready to eat that. So uh, I'll eat these stems. And I, this is just the broccoli stem. I peel it. I just cut the, cause they, they're very woody on the outside. Sometimes if you get really, really fresh broccoli from the farmer's market, it's not as woody, but usually like if you put that in your soup, you'll be like chewing on the outside of it. So you want to take the outside off. And then my, my kids and I love these. I make like, you know, little dip sticks with them or we just eat them like that. Okay. So this is going really well here. I'm going to start adding my spices. If I can find my spoon, there they are. All right. So I'm going to add my cumin. Uh, two teaspoons of this. Maybe I'll like angle over here a little. So one, two, and sometimes I'll add more cumin at the end. Oh, you know, I forgot about my, uh, I, I don't think I mentioned my smoked paprika. That's another thing I put in a lot of these kind of warm spice soups. So I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. That's another one that has a little bit of a stronger taste. So I go a little easier with that. Um, and then this 21 seasoning salute, I'm going to add at least a teaspoon. I'll probably do two. See, I'm, I, you can see I, I do it kind of generously. So there's quite a bit going in the pot over my teaspoon, but uh, you could, because it, with this one, again, I've never found that if you add too much of it, I mean, yeah, if I poured half of the thing in there, it probably wouldn't be very good, but it's fine with this. All right. So I'm going to let that. It's kind of the spices, mm, it smells so good already. Um, the spices are coating that. Uh, I'm gonna add, I add the cayenne a little later. I'm not gonna add that yet. All right, but I am gonna add the turmeric, which on spices that I use a lot, I buy big bags of them. So I have turmeric and I actually have, I add a, about a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon too, so. And the cinnamon is another one. I feel like it can take over a little. So I add a quarter teaspoon and then at the end, I can always add a little more. So a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And I think this recipe will be right, written down somewhere for you guys to access it and have it. So I wanna make sure that you get it. And then the turmeric, I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of turmeric. And whenever you add turmeric to a recipe, does anybody know what you have to add to make sure that you absorb it properly? Anyone? Okay. The peppery and black pepper 
increases the bioavailability of um, the curcumin in the, in the turmeric by 400%. So you wanna make sure, I think, I, I think my number's right. I think it's 400, it might be even more. Um, so you wanna make sure that you put a sprinkle of black pepper whenever you use turmeric, okay? Because without the black pepper, we don't absorb a lot of the turmeric. Uh, we just, our bodies just don't do it. So you want to have those two are married. You always do those two together. Okay. All right. So now I'll show you my pots. Da -da -da. Here we go. All right. So you see what's going on here. I have my spices coated over my, my veggies. I turn the heat down because I don't want the spices to burn on the bottom of the pan. That would not be good. So I turn that down. I usually have someone helping me with this, but I don't. So I have to do it. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, all right. So now I'm going to add my uh, sweet potatoes. Um, I cut, I peeled these already. You could probably wash them really well and put the skin in. The skin is really healthy. This was like not the youngest sweet potato. So I don't think I'd want to eat the skin. It was a little tough. But if this, if they're brand, you know, if they're new and the skin is really thin, you can certainly keep the skin on. You will get more nutrition. So I'm cutting these about the same size as the carrots. All right, I'm gonna throw them in here. And I want them to get coated with the spices and I want them to cook a tiny bit before I add the liquid. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, I'm also, I also diced or minced two garlic cloves. I'm putting those in as well right now. Um, you can add the garlic with the onion, but if you don't pay attention for a bit, like sometimes I do, I'll walk away and it's browning, you know, and then the garlic gets that brown, it gets a very strong taste. So I usually add the garlic now so that I, so that if I do forget and walk away and it starts browning a little and the garlic was on the outside and all of a sudden it's got that kind of too uh, brown thing going on. Uh, it doesn't taste as good. It gets a little bitter. So I add it now. So she I have a question for you. Do you yeah. ever, um, you know, once the, the vegetables are all kind of, you know, spoiled and simmered, do you ever take them out, put them in a blender and then put it back into the pot just so you have something instead of more broth-like consistency, it gets more of a creamy kind of consistency? All the time. But I want, I, I do it with a hand blender at the end of making a soup. I'll take a hand blender and just blend. I don't do it with these soups uh, because these aren't creamy soups. But if I do like a potato leek soup, every time, I do it every time. Uh, yeah, if you like blended soups, I mean, this this one, I don't know. I don't know. I've never tried blending it. Maybe it would be good. But I think with all the vegetables in here, like because I'm adding garbanzos and stuff, I don't know whether it would be as good blended. But uh, but yeah, uh, butternut squash soup. Sometimes I'll blend it all the way. Sometimes I partly blend it. So that's mm -hmm. another good one that's blended. So yeah, I, I, I actually do often do that. Yeah. And some because sometimes we're just more in the mood for a soup that just goes down really easy and it's blended and and I would say you can try blending almost any soup uh but some work better than others I do find like if you're using garbanzo those don't blend great um but I know what you're saying like you could blend what's in here already um but I usually just blend at the end okay I need more broth so this was a case in point of not having that garlic in there because the bottom just got a little bit brown all right so I'm adding my garlic and this is, I have a little story about garlic too, because I had for years, many years, not eating garlic because I thought I was allergic to it. It, it gave me, well, or had a sensitivity to it, I should say. It gave me horrible distress after I ate it, um, especially in like Chinese food or something where it wasn't cooked all the way or raw, like in a, um, like, you know, that uh, like when people like rub it on bread raw and then put tomatoes on it anything like that would make me really, really sick. And so I thought I just couldn't eat it. And then I slowly started adding it to soups and cooking it for a long time as a whole piece of garlic. And, you know, we cook in a soup for 30 minutes or so. And I started realizing this isn't bothering me. I don't know why, but it's not. Uh, and then, because I would eat it after, half the time, you know, I couldn't fish it out before I blended it. So I just ended up eating it and being fine. So I realized that slow cooked garlic in a soup, I can now mince it and eat it. And it's not a problem for me. So that's just kind of like playing with your food a little bit and playing with what you think are food sensitivities, because I was leaving out a very important uh, nutrient in garlic uh, from my diet, thinking I couldn't handle it. And I, I could, I'm fine with it. So that's just 
I guess a little one of those lessons you learn. All right, so now this is really, everything's coated. Everything's, my, my sweet potatoes have been heating up in here a little. They have a lot of spices around them. So I'm now gonna add my broth. This is the broth I'm using, it's Trader Joe's. I'm gonna say it, it works well. I use it a lot because I shop at Trader Joe's a lot. It's probably not my favorite broth, but there's so many spices in here that it, it's not gonna bother me. If, if you have a very broth heavy soup and you're not using a lot of spices, this might not be my go-to. It's pretty low in salt, which is nice too, though, just naturally. They have, I don't know if they have a low salt vegetable. They do occasionally. I don't think I don't think I see it there all the time though. So this is a, just their hearty vegetable broth. So I've added that. I'm gonna turn up my heat now and get this to a full simmer. Um, I'm probably gonna add a little water. Uh, and my grandmother, when I was younger, my grandmother made a lot of soup and I made a lot of soup with her. And she always added like a half a bouillon cube. And so I found a vegetarian bouillon cube that doesn't have palm oil in it. And so I always kind of add, it's just this little square. I add half of it to pretty much every soup I make. And it definitely gives it more mommy flavor. I wouldn't add a lot because they are pretty salty, but I'm, I am gonna add that because I just know I'm gonna want it later. Um, you can you can though at the end, make it without that and then taste it. If it's good, don't worry about it. But um, I usually add just a half uh, and some water. So sorry, I should say I add that with my water. I wouldn't just add it to veggie broth. So, so I don't use as much veggie broth. I just added a, about a cup and a half of water to that. And I'm gonna put up top on this and let it do its thing for a while. I usually take a little taste like, okay, what's happening here? It's good. It needs salt. I didn't add salt to it yet. I will add salt. If you're on a low salt diet, add maybe even more herbs. Uh, but I'm not going to add salt yet because I want those herbs to do their thing and start incorporating with each other and um, and then I'll and then I'll taste it again. So I still have to add a couple of things to this. I'm still going to be adding my garbanzos. I'm still going to be adding my broccoli. Um, as I said, I, I, oh, I love topping the soup with, um, oh, sorry, that's the soup, wrong soup. I ate sherry vinegar. I don't top this one with that. Uh, sometimes in the end, I'll add a little liquid aminos for, an, again, if it, I want that umami flavor, uh, they are kind of technically like soy sauce, but they don't, they don't taste like soy sauce. If you just add a little, they just add, like bring the flavor out. Okay. And they have a decent amount of, they have like one teaspoon has a, a one gram of protein, I don't worry about protein. I get enough protein on a plant-based diet, but some people do worry about it. So I just kind of throw it in there like, yeah, it has one gram of protein. So if you put a tablespoon, you get three extra grams, but we might not even do that. Let's see how it goes. All right, so now I'm gonna work on my other soup, which is my one of my favorites. It's definitely my husband's favorite. And it's this quinoa soup that has uh, some cabbage. Hey, oh, this soup is gonna have kale in it too. I should have mentioned that. Any soup I can put kale into, I'm gonna put kale in it, okay? So my kale's already cut up it's in little leaves. I actually got this kale from Trader Joe's. It's bagged kale. I do go through it though. And if the stems are big enough to kind of grip and pull off, I pull the big stems off. The little ones aren't gonna be a big deal, but I don't find that the big stems cook up that well. I don't wanna eat soup and then bite into some big stem. So I de-stem them, uh, even though you know they're already chopped up in here. Uh, I already went through it before, but if I, if like, in like this, like this is in here, like, I don't want to eat that pretty much ever. So I'm going to take that out, <laughs> but it is convenient. Sometimes they don't, they, at Trader Joe's, that's where I went to shop. They don't sell whole kale. So I just thought, okay, I'm going to buy this because it is the elephant kale that I like, and I've used it plenty of times and it works great. All right. So moving on, we're going to do, again, we're going to get our onions going. We're going to get our, we're going to get our onions going. And we're gonna get our celery and carrots. And this time for the celery and carrots, um, I am going to cut them a lot. I'm gonna dice them. So I'm not gonna keep these big chunky veggies in this soup. That's just not this soup. This soup has vegetables that are more finely chopped. Um, it's a different feel. Like you're spooning it and you're not like chewing on these big chunks of vegetables because that's just not that soup. All right, so I have my onions again all ready to go. I'm going to get them in. I always throw my onions in first. You can throw them all in together, but a lot of times I will throw my onions in first. I think I forgot to do that on the last one, but that's just because I'm talking and cooking and I'm not a great multitasker. It's surprising that I, <laughs> I've become a cooking instructor uh, <laughs> considering my multitasking skills are less than stellar, but I guess I can 
make it happen. All right, so these two carrots, I picked these two because they're really skinny, so I don't have to cut these in half and they're gonna end up being really small. This carrot I did cut in half, so now I'm just gonna cut it into you know much smaller pieces than I did with the other carrots. These, we consider these diced. There's all these little veggie dicers, choppers. I don't know if you've seen them. Some of them are kind of fun to have. If you make a lot of soup and you cook a lot, you want to make a, a, you know, a couple of pots that you're going to freeze in jars or something, it's nice to have those choppers. They just take a lot less time. I'm not making enough here to warrant a chopper, but just making sure that's, that's at a, you know, a simmer, a, a, a high simmer, I would call it. All right, so I'm going to get my carrots in here. Again, I had like three or four carrots. Uh, my celery, I'm going to cut lengthwise. So lengthwise, a bunch of, I'll do like, this one's really big. So I'm going to cut this one lengthwise twice. And then I'll put them all together. I'll chop my head off a little bit. You can see what I'm doing. Okay. So then I'm going to. And I don't always go through all these like little details, but people have asked me to. So I've started going through the minutia, right? The little details of how we make these, how we cut the celery, how I cut the carrots, because it does make a difference and not everybody knows. Not everybody's, you know, cooking all the time and they're trying to learn how to cook. So if you already know, apologize for the maybe uh, having to watch, but not everybody does. Okay. And then uh, to this one, I'm going to add cabbage and I'm going to add it now. So this is, I just hunked a piece of cabbage off. Again, anytime I can add cabbage to a soup, I'm going to, I mean, the other one, I have the broccoli, I have so much in there already, I didn't add it, but this one, I'm gonna put in. And this, for cabbage, I cut it up really small. So that I'm gonna, I already washed it. I'm just kind of cutting it lengthwise and then I'm gonna cut it again. Uh, sometimes I'll do like long strips of cabbage and soup like this, but for this one again, because we have that whole dicing thing going on, I'm gonna cut the cabbage up really small. So like in a spoonful, you're gonna get like a little cabbage, a little carrots, a little celery, uh, some fennel, which I'm about to talk about. All right, so I'm throwing this in here. And I'm just gonna try to remember to pay attention and to toss it around. And again, it's in the tiniest bit of broth. You can hear it sizzling just like it would if it was in olive oil, but we don't need the extra olive oil in there because it's caloric, it's processed and it's unnecessary. All right, so now I have fennel. Um, this is a fennel bulb. If you're not familiar with fennel, it looks like this. Uh, I already cleaned it and I'm just gonna chop it into very small pieces. Uh, similar to the other things, it's a dice. I already cut it lengthwise. I'll show you on my hand in a second how I cut it, but it's kind of like this, you know? It's very fragrant. Uh, it tastes, if you haven't had fennel, I don't know, what does it taste like? Anise? It, in soup, it tastes kind of like celery, honestly, once it's in there already and cooking up. And you could put as little or as much fennel as you want. I, I, put, I put about a half a bulb in there. See, this piece is kind of yucky, so I'm not gonna put that in. The rest of it looked pretty good. So I'm gonna put that in. Chrissy? Yes. I noticed you're cooking with two different pots. Do you prefer one for certain types of food over the other? No, that's such a good question though. It's a funny question only because I took a couple, a couple of my pots somewhere and I didn't bring them back. So I don't have the pots I usually use. I use these, I love the enamel cookware. I use that kind of whenever I make soup, but this other one is, um, it's, it's good you brought it up. Um, it's a green pan. And so I'm using the green pan and not necessarily for either soup. I could have used either, uh, but the green pan I like because it's not Teflon and it's not enamel either, but it's something that isn't gonna harm you or in my case, my birds because a tough one is like one, a huge killer, believe it or not, of little birds of parakeets and parrots because there's fumes that it emits when you cook with it and it goes in the air and people, I, I know someone personally whose daughter always had the parrot in the kitchen, her little parakeet, and uh, he just, while she was cooking, just fell over and died. And it's because of the fumes from the Teflon. And and okay, if you can kill a parrot, we used to send canary in the coal mine, right? So <laughs> I don't think I want to be cooking with that if it's going to kill 
a little creature, what is it doing to us? So I try not to use any Teflon. So that is a good question, but no, not specifically. I, if I had my choice, I would probably be using any type of these enamel cookware just because I think they're so easy to clean. I do think that things brown a little better on enamel, but I'm not really trying to brown anything here. So the, so um, it's gonna work perfectly well. This, this green pan is gonna work perfectly well for this too, but that was a good observation. I think that sometimes the enamel pots tend to, I, I don't know, it's, I don't know what it is, but to me, it seems like it gives things um, the flavoring and the, and the thickness of things really come to fruition so much better than just your regular kind of stainless steel pot. I think you're absolutely right. And I think it's because they cook so evenly. Yep, they really the evening. distribute the heat evenly through the whole pot. And that does, it, do, it does make it taste better. You're hundred percent right. Um, which is why I prefer my enamel pots. Exactly. Um, yeah. Cause this is, this is cooking it. Now, I mean, it's going to work, but the enamel you do, it just, it, the flavor is kind of infused in everything a lot better. And I think it's because of the evenness of the cooking that you get with an enamel pot. You know, all the French, the French, you know, who are big <laughs> into cooking, they always use the enamel pots, especially for soup. So, you know, they're, they're always on to something when it comes to that. Okay, I'm just tasting this and it's, it's doing well. I don't really need, I don't think I need anything right now. It's nice. Um, and I didn't even, I didn't add that salt, so I might not have to. Uh, we'll see. And and again, if you're salt sensitive or you're trying to stay away from salt, you get used to it. Uh, I I tend to pro I tend to use a, a little bit of salt because my boys like whatever I make better if there's a, a decent amount of salt in there. I like it better. I have very low blood pressure. Like I'm not salt sensitive as far as I know. But there's like some other reasons not to eat salt too. So if you're trying to stay away with it, away from it. It's kind of like the same thing with sugar. You have to stay away from it and eat things without it so your, your taste buds get used to it. I probably haven't done that long enough. Uh, so if, if you go to a restaurant and everything tastes really salty, it's because you're doing a good job at home not salting things, you know, because right, restaurants use tons of salt because salt brings out the flavor of things. So tons of salt, tons of fat, that's what brings out flavor. So I always said, you know, I have, if someone cooks something for me and it has a ton of oil and it has a ton of salt, like I, and it tastes really good, I'm not as impressed as someone who makes me an oil-free, low salt meal that still tastes really good, right? Because that's what's so much harder to do. All right, so this soup is doing. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna check my potatoes. That that's what I'll check now. And yeah, they're so, they're soft. So I'm gonna put in the broccoli. The potatoes are not super soft, but they're soft. So I need to get the broccoli in there. And I'm going to get those garbanzos in there. And I'm going to stick it all underneath the broth here. I made this soup. I was practicing for my soup class. And I made this, can, kind of came up with this soup the other night. And my husband had a friend who was uh, staying over. He was from out of town. And he was staying over. And I made it for him. And he's kind of, he eats a decent amount of meat. So I wasn't sure how it would go over. And he had three bowls of it. And I find that a lot. People are a little skeptical. And then it's like, can I have a little more? Can I have a little more? Can I have a little more? And then he said he was full for days because he's like, I never get this full, like in a good way. I, and I'm like, that's because you're nourished. <laughs> it's because you're getting what your body, your body wants all this nutrition. And we are so not good about giving it that. I just realized I never added my garlic to this other soup. So I'm going to, well, it's okay. I, actually, I wouldn't have added it yet. What am I saying? I am going to add it now though, because everything in the, my other soup pot is getting nice and soft. I'll show you. Let me pull my computer back over. Okay, so this is the soup. That's doing its thing. I'm going to push all that under there and bring up the heat again. And then I just added my, oh, how do I do this? There we go. I just added my garlic. And I'll come back. All right, so uh, any questions? Not yet? Okay. All right, so to the, I added the garlic to that soup. I am going to add my fennel, which like I said, I use fennel seeds and I'll either chop them, but preferably... I'll put them in a coffee grinder and like pulverize them. So these are my fennel seeds chopped up. I'm gonna add them to the soup and I'm gonna mix everything around. Actually, let me get this one going here. This one is like, take, it's taking a break because I added cold stuff to it. Now it's like not doing anything. All right, soup, do your thing. I'm gonna cover it. 
Okay, and now this one, I added the garlic. Uh, I'll come back and view here. And I added, everything's getting nice and very caramelized. I do want to show you this because anyone that says you can't caramelize things and, and bring out that flavor using just broth is wrong. Look, you see that? Okay, it's, it looks every bit as good and even a little glisteny like it does with garlic. So we're on a, a run here, we're doing well. All right, so, uh, all right, so I have that going and now I am going to add to the, to the fennel soup, I'm gonna add some diced tomatoes. I made sure before I bought these from Costco, you can go online and find out that these are BPA free cans. Uh, often tomatoes are in cans that have BPA because it prevents them from spoiling. Uh, you can you can often tell that there's BPA in there because the inside of the can is white. This inside of the can just looks like tin. Um, it's not white, but it's not always white. It's a little tricky, so you have to find out. Uh, some of the cans, like if you're shopping in a Whole Foods uh, or you know like a health food store, will say BPA free. Eden Foods, like it says BPA free on the can. You can also buy tomatoes in jars. They do cost a lot more. Uh, I find, uh, but you can buy jarred diced tomatoes and um, but, ugh, I'm like blanking on the, the brand, Jovial. They're very good actually. And I, I will buy those, uh, especially because they have a really good taste too. So if I'm making something that's a little more tomato heavy, I might use those because I want that flavor from those tomatoes. And you'll learn that too. This isn't a tomato, like I want the um, nutrients from these tomatoes, cooked tomatoes are so good for you. I want those nutrients but I don't want, um, it's not a tomato soup, right? So it's not gonna, you're not gonna be tasting too much of the tomatoes. Okay, and so I added the fennel to this. I added the tomatoes. I, I am gonna add my herbs now. And for this, I'm using herb de Provence, which is basil, fennel, so more fennel, marjoram, parsley, rosemary, lavender, tarragon, tarragon and thyme. Um, all mixes of herbs de Provence have different amounts of, those herbs, if it's if they're very rosemary heavy, I'm not a fan. I don't like rosemary soup. That's just me. Maybe you love rosemary, then get one that's a little rosemary heavy. I kind of find it takes over a little bit, so I'm not like I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't go for that one. This one is not as heavy, so it's it's fine. So what I'm going to do with this is what I do with these. Sometimes I'll put it in my hand and then I'll scrunch it up in the soup because. Some of these herbs are kind of big and I don't want them to be big. So I'm going to squish it and then put it in my soup. Squish, I don't know. That's not like a real technical cooking term, but I think you know what I'm saying. Um, try to break up <laughs> those bigger herbs. So I put a teaspoon of that and it may need more, but I think a teaspoon is probably going to be fine. Okay, so that's going. Um, I'm just going to, again, I'm going to try to meld all these flavors a little together. And then I'm going to add my quinoa, which I've already rinsed. Quinoa has to be rinsed. It has a bitter outer coating on it that it, the, the biggest fail that people make with quinoa is they forget to rinse it. And they'll come to me and they'll say, I don't know how you eat quinoa so much. It's so disgusting. I'm like, oh, tell me how you cook it. I just, you know, I just dump it in the pot. And I'm like, okay, what, what? Dump it in the pot. Did I, I didn't hear a rinse there. No, I don't rinse it. Okay. Well, that's why it's disgusting because you have that bitter outer coating and your quinoa tastes bitter, right? Yeah, it does. Okay, try rinsing and they get back to me. They get back to me and they like it again because uh, they like it at my house and then they go home and try to make it and they say, what's the quinoa? I, uh, even though I tell people, you know, it, it's easy to forget when you, especially when you're cooking a new way. I rinsed this, this is already dry, but it was rinsed, trust me. So I'm, I'm getting ready to add that. I'm gonna add it once I add my liquid, which is gonna be another part of this broth. All right, so the other thing with, if you're making quinoa, because I'm just kind of killing time here. I'll tell you a little about quinoa. Okay, this I'm gonna. This is now full boiling. I'm gonna get a different stirring thing. This is in a full boil. I did cut the broccoli. <laughs> I realized I didn't cut the broccoli as small as I probably would have liked it to. I like it to be bite sized. This this I kind of went a little crazy and made it a little big, but no one in my family is gonna care. But if you're making it for your family and they don't want this huge piece of broccoli to chew on, cut it more bite sized. Oh, you'll see when I'm done. I, I probably could have teased it and you wouldn't have seen it, but got to be on this because we all do that when we cook. We all do things not always perfectly. I'm going to taste this again. See, and the nice thing is before I tasted it, it, it was not bitter, but it the herbs are very 
prominent. And now that I added the broccoli, broccoli, when it cooks, gets a little sweet. So now the soup is getting sweet. So yay. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm coming back to my other soup. I am going to add now my liquid. So I'm going to add the whole box, and then I'm going to add a cup of water. So there's five cups of liquid, okay, in, in both of these soups. The other one might have a little more uh, because it's kind of a bigger soup. And then I'm going to add my quinoa in there. And I'm going to, quinoa takes about 15 minutes to cook, okay? So you have to put it, put the quinoa in when the veggies are really soft because it only takes 15 minutes. And if I keep cooking it, it's going to get really broken down and mushy. So now the soup, I know those, those veggies were soft, which is when I know, okay, now I can add my quinoa and in 15 minutes, it's everything's gonna be done and yummy. All right, so I'm turning that up. I could right now too add some red lentils to that and that would be nice. Um, I don't have any and I didn't, but you can add red lentils to that. Instead though, what I chose for that soup is I'm gonna add at the end when there's only like five minutes left. So set timers. I'm not setting a timer now. I hope I remember when they're, you guys wave, flag, flag me down in 10 minutes. Um, so I have some white beans that I'm gonna add, a whole can that I rinse well. Uh, I don't want the like thick syrup from the white beans that, you know, in there. And then I'm about to add some mushrooms as well. So uh, I'm gonna cut some mushrooms up and put those in as well. Now, mushrooms are big time cancer fighters as well. Uh, the thing with mushrooms is everybody has a different idea of how they like to cut them. I keep the stem on. And I just cut them really small. Again, everything in this soup is really small. So if I have these big mushrooms in there, it's gonna be weird because everything else I have in there is diced. So I'm gonna cut these really small and they're still gonna be in there and everybody's gonna like them. But, uh, and also if you have kids that don't like mushrooms, uh, dice them <laughs> or don't put them in, or you can put them in like a separate pot, like transfer some soup to a separate pot, put them in there for you. Cause not every, not every kid likes mushrooms. My kids are sometimes like them, sometimes don't. And they're not, I mean, they're my kids, but they're in college. <laughs> so they, uh, they're not little kids and they're still like a little bit not into them. All right, so here we go. My mushrooms are ready, I'm gonna throw them in. And I'm not putting that much because as I mentioned, my kids aren't crazy for them and I do want them to eat the soup. Okay, I have to turn the heat up on that soup and I have to get a lid, excuse me one second. I like the green pan lids. They're kind of substantial. They have a little place for the air to escape. All right, so that's going. This one is, I'm gonna keep checking this one because I don't want the broccoli to get overdone. If I cook it anymore, the broccoli is gonna get overdone. So I'm gonna add my third of a cup of my light coconut milk. This says kimchi on it, I reuse jars. <laughs> so it's not kimchi. And all that's gonna do, it's just gonna lighten it up. You're not even really gonna know it's in there aside from the taste. You will know because it's, it, it's just gonna taste that much better. Okay, and I'm also gonna add my cayenne pepper and I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on the top of that. And I'm gonna mix this all up. And I'm going to now, I'm push, putting that in there and I'm going to shut the heat off because this is done. This is way done. In fact, I would argue that, oh, no, let me taste it. Hold on. I'll tell you in a sec. No, it's perfect. Mm. It's really good. I don't need to add more salt. I don't need to add more of anything. This soup is delicious. I wish you could have some. I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> Someday we'll do these live and then you can have some. Someday, right? I'd like to get back to those days someday. Uh, all right. And okay, so my garbanzos are in there. I have this off now. I'm going to keep it uncovered. Uh, sometimes when a soup like this is done, 
I will take it all out and put it in a bowl and let it cool because I don't, the, that's the thing about these cast iron pots. You almost want to cook everything till it's like almost done, but sometimes it's hard for me to judge, right? I'll think, oh, it's almost done. I'll keep it in there. It'll cook. And then it doesn't cook the rest of the way. Um, but right now I'm going to move it off the heat and I'm just going to let it sit. And if it looks like it's like cooking more than I want it to cook, I I'll take it out and I'll put it in a bowl or a jar. Sometimes I'll freeze it. Uh, this is going to get eaten. So I don't need to worry about that. Um, okay. So let's get back to the other soup, which is simmering away here. And with this one, I could have added the mushrooms when I added the rest of the veggies. Uh, but I didn't, so it's okay. I added it with the quinoa and they're gonna cook up just fine. So I'm not too worried about it. Okay, oh, you know what? This one, the one that's still sitting there, I'm gonna cool it off a little and I'm gonna cook my kale by just adding it. I'm gonna add a couple handfuls of kale. How could I forget about my kale? All right, so like, again, I'm not gonna put this big stem in there. I'm gonna just pull it off. Just go through it roughly. You can always pull the stems out later if you miss one or two, but it's like so much easier to do now. Okay, and I'm going to bury this kale in the hot soup. Hold it in there. Do you serve it sometimes just a little raw with the kale in it? Uh, the raw kale, you mean? Yeah, do you, can you just like, for example, serve the soup and then just shred your kale and just kind of top off the, the soup like that? Uh, you probably could, yeah. I, I prefer, I think um, if, you, if you massage the kale first, yes. Um, kale to me, it either needs to be heated up a little bit or massaged. Um, I'll take like, I'll take the hugest amount of kale and I just one teaspoon of olive oil and massage the kale just like, you know, like this with a little bit of oil gently. And it makes it so much, I wouldn't say easier. It makes it so much more delicious. It makes it so you want to eat it versus it being very rough and um, kind of chewy. In fact, I went to a party the other night and they had a, a kale salad and the kale wasn't uh, massaged. It was just like a bunch of kale in a salad with some dressing on it. And it was so hard to eat. <laughs> in fact, four of my friends and I are eating it and we smiled and we had so much kale stuck in our teeth because it was like really chewy. <laughs> We're like, okay, this is what toothpicks are for. I'll be right back. Uh, so yeah, I, I do think you could do that, but I would do it uh, if only if the kale is massaged and then chopped very finely. But I like to just throw it in at the end because as you can see, it's already, it's wilted and it's kind of perfect now. Yeah, it's good. And by the time this sits another five minutes, it's gonna be perfection, okay? So now I have the other soup is boiling. The quinoa is doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to open up a little bit. And um, what do I need to add? What else am I adding to that? I'm adding maybe some salt. I'm gonna add this sherry vinegar right at the end. This is kind of my secret trick with a lot of soups that are just more herb based. Uh, at the end, I add aged sherry vinegar and it just gives it this punch. And everybody always says like, you know, what is that taste? And I say, I don't know, because I don't want to give all my secrets away. But now you guys know. <laughs> it is so good. The other thing I like adding at the end is this freeze dried parsley. Uh, uh, and I'm going to add a little bit of this. I'm going to add a little bit of this to both of them, but I do like that at the end. That gives it a nice taste as well. So I'm going to add that to both. This one, I'm waiting to add these beans. These beans, because they came out of a can, they're cooked already. So I don't want to put them in too early. I feel like garbanzos, you can kind of put in earlier, but with the white beans, they're already squishy. And if you add them, they're going to, they can end up kind of breaking down. And I, and I don't want that to happen because again, this isn't a blended soup. So I don't want them to break down. All right, this is going really well now. I'm going to have to give it a little taste and see what's happening. Again, I'll taste it now and I just get a sense of, okay, what do I need to add? I can really taste that fennel, which I like. And I can always add some cayenne to this too. What I usually do with this soup is I, I don't add any cayenne. I don't add any spice to it because at the end, my family can always add some hot sauce to it. And that's what usually happens because I have like one kid who loves spicy everything and another kid who doesn't. So then I, I won't do it. 
so again, with the, the liquid amino acids, I might have added them to either of these soups. I might add them to this one if I need a little umami, but this one, this one is good. I, my first soup that I made, the sweet potato, uh, sweet potato broccoli soup. I need to come up with a name for it. You guys can help me. I don't know. I haven't named it yet because it's new. I just call it delicious. All right. So this is, yeah, this is going well here. The quinoa is opening up. We're almost done here. And quinoa, uh, when you cook quinoa, it gets, sometimes it gets a little foamy. I just want to show you that. Don't panic. If you don't have dish soap in your soup. You see that? It, it gets a little foamy, especially when the tomatoes are in there. So don't, oh, okay. There. Uh, don't worry about that too much. Okay. So let's see, I'm going to add, I think I'm, I'm ready to add my beans because they, it probably has a few more minutes and so do the white beans. So I'm going to toss those in there and I'm going to mix that, those in. And then with this one, because it, again, it's not a real chunky soup. I'm going to cut this kale up because I don't want big chunks of kale in a soup that everything else is finely cut, as I keep saying. So I'm going to chop this kale up and I'm going to put this in a little earlier because I do want this to kind of cook down in there along with everything else that what everything else has been doing. And would it hurt if to put the kale in later? Probably not, but it also wouldn't hurt to add it now. And it definitely doesn't hurt to chop it up because it would be the only thing, then it would have suddenly become like a kale soup because that would be the most prominent thing in the pot. Like, oh, look at all that kale. I just want it to kind of go away, but offer us all the nutrition it has to offer us, which as I think, I think the word's out on kale. I don't need to talk kale up too much. Everybody knows that <laughs> kale is a power food, a super food. Throwing that in. So we have tomatoes. We have the lycopene from the cooked tomatoes. We have, oh gosh, I'm not even gonna name all the phytonutrients in kale. Um, some of their names are so long. Uh, and we have the white beans, we have the quinoa, which has a lot of protein, the beans have protein, the mushrooms have protein and all that nutrition. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. I'm gonna gauge, I'll probably add more kale, but I don't think you have to sit here and watch me add kale forever. So let me show you what it looks like. Now, you see that? Turn it down to a little bit lower simmer. Is that looking pretty good to you guys? Okay, good. All right, and I'll put them in a bowl so you can see them in a bowl. Let's do this one. That's, I'll just put it in this little shallow bowl so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so here's this one. You see how nice and hot and how everything is kind of chunky and ready to go. And then this other soup, which I have to taste again. I wouldn't want to serve this without tasting it because it wasn't done the first time I tasted it. Okay, I didn't put the bouillon in this one, so I am going to add a little salt. I'm just going to add a, a pinch, maybe a quarter teaspoon. I'm going to see what it tastes like. And then the other thing is, you can salt soup after the fact in your bowl, so you don't have to add. You don't have to add that salt that I just added. I just know who's. I know my audience. I know who's eating the soup, and I know that all of them are going to want a little more salt. So that's why I added it. Uh, if I added that little half a bouillon cube to it, it probably wouldn't have needed it but this has a lot of spices in it. I don't think it needs that. I think it just needs a little salt. I'm gonna twist it. I just wanted to bring the bouillon cube up in case when you're eating soups, you find them to be boring. That adds a little. Okay, it's good. I am gonna add a little of the sherry vinegar. And that, yeah, I add it right at the end. I don't know, I'm not a chef, so I don't know if there's a reason that you just add it at the end versus in the middle. Uh, but it tastes better if you add it right now. I guess it cooks off, right? If I add it too early, it's going to cook off. So maybe that's the reason. I could look some of this technical stuff up. I just go by taste. Where do you, where do you buy that vinegar? This vinegar, um, I usually find it at, oh, actually, this one I found at Vons. Oh. Okay. But they have it at uh, any like gourmet food store or, or Whole Foods. Uh, they have a lot of different vinegars at Lazy Acres. So any of those stores. That would be my question. Can you can you substitute the vinegar? 
Yes, you can. You can substitute with white vinegar, but it, it to me, it's not as good. It's, it's not will, as better. Because okay. I, I ran out of sherry vinegar for a while, and and sherry vinegar is great in salad dressings too. So it's just good to have. It's it, it it's a very different taste in salad dressings than um, white vinegar. And don't use white vinegar. Um, uh, white wine vinegar. White vinegar is gonna really it's gonna really change the taste. So you want to use white wine vinegar. Yeah. I like the one from Trader Joe's, but I probably like it because they add sugar to it and it's really it's sweet. And the sherry vinegar tends to be a little sweet. So maybe that's why I like that trade off. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to show you the soup and then, and with the vinegar, add a little, taste it, add a little more because a teaspoon might be enough. You, you know, don't go crazy and pouring that in there because a teaspoon might be enough. And then I'll show you what this one looks like. And I, I'll probably add a little more kale to this, but it's it's pretty good. You see the the beans, the tomatoes, and everything's kind of small, so you can cut. You can get one of everything. You can get a piece, a tomato, a piece of celery, an onion, a bean, and some kale all in one spoonful. Where with this other soup, you know, my spoonful is probably just going to be, you know, a sweet potato. And it, so that's why it, it's different. That's why you can experiment with chopping your veggies to different uh, sizes, all right? So if, if anybody has any questions, I'm looking to see if I forgot anything. I usually finish a video and realize like I forgot to add something. It tastes really good though, so it probably doesn't matter. Um, the other thing I would say is if you can, with turmeric, if you can put a teaspoon in it, do it. Like as long as you're used to turmeric and you like the taste of it, it's not gonna ruin it, put more of that in there. Put that in your smoothies. Put that, anytime you can add turmeric to something, do it, okay? Uh, because it, it's just such a powerhouse and it's such a nutritional powerhouse. Um, I do think that my sweet potato soup could have used a little more cinnamon and I might add a little more now because uh, it's been sitting and I just tasted it. I'm like, yeah, I might need a little more cinnamon. So don't be afraid to play around with these herbs. Just add a little at a time. That's my thing. You add a little at a time because if you add a lot, you can't take it out. You can always add more. So just always remember that and you're never going to make a bad soup. That, that's where I think people go wrong. They put like if I just dump too much of this uh, vinegar in, even that would be enough to take over and it won't taste good. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for you know learning with me. I learn every time I have to come up with soup for class, I'm learning a new soup. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Um, if you're going through some stuff right now, I wish you good healing. I'm a survivor as well. So uh, I get you and uh, have a great, a great, uh, week, weekend, holiday, new year, and we'll see you after that. Thank you, Christy. We really appreciate your, your soups here. They look tremendously delicious. And um, we appreciate the partnership that we've created with uh, Rooted Santa Barbara and with you and Emma and Beth and, and Chris best. as well. We wish you, of course, all the best in this holiday season and happy new year. And again, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. All right. Bye. Cheers, bye.